Is it what 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 what, what, what crazy? Or talk crazy? Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. He was making the headline. Black Maria is to is to carry criminals, taking looters. That are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Slap you in the face. Excuse me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our military to the support. I said, oh, hell On Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has a right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. Thank you so very much for staying with us on the program. It's Core Digest on Core TV News. And like I said before the break, um, we'll be kicking off from when we last left on Wednesday as we looked at to lead and to follow. You know, the last time we spoke of uh, to lead and to follow Nigeria's experience, now we're looking at more specific how to perfect the role of being a leader or being the follower that you, that we uh, expect it to be. And now, to actually understand what we're looking at today, I have a very simple definition of who a leader is and who a follower should be. And a leader is someone who influences a group of people towards the achievement of a goal. He enlists the aid and support of others in the accomplishment of a common task. And so what this definition simply means is that a good leadership or a good leadership um, process would need the help of a follower to achieve whatever goal is set to achieve. And for a follower, a follower is one who accepts the guidance, command of or leadership of another. And uh, now when they say active followership, an active follower should not just necessarily um, go without asking questions, but of course follow a leader and be very, very involved. They need to make sure that the leader is actually leading him to the right place he wants to be. And that's why we're looking at perfecting the roles as a leader or a follower. And discussing this topic with me are two wonderful um, people. I have a gentleman and a very beautiful lady on the show. I have Chidi Ologo, who is a public affairs analyst and legal practitioner. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, and the beautiful lady over there is Abimbola Junaid. She is a public affairs analyst also. Good morning, Abimbola. Good morning. All right, it's really nice having you both on the show. Now, we want to look at, um, you know, it's a new dispensation, so a lot of Nigerians want to forget what happened in the past. And um, we had the party who ruled Nigeria for 16 years, and now, for the first time, it's a new dawn for a whole lot of Nigerians. And so we want to see that um, things are put in the right place. And now we want to look at now that we are um, on the administration of change now, to lead and to follow. The question is... Um, do we really have leaders in Nigeria, judging from the definition of a leader that I gave? Yes, we have leaders. You know, let's go back to how we end our independence. Some Nigerians came together and realized we deserved something better. And they fought for it. And I'm sure they had a vision of growing the country. Don't forget that as a country, you are in the midst of other countries. So you must look at what is happening here. Okay, those who came to colonize us, how is their own society? Uh, should we be like them and even surpass what they have achieved? Or do we go back to the you know, rudiments? And I think the, the disconnect started coming when subsequent leaders deviated from they set goals because when you were talking about leadership, there must be a goal of what must be achieved. Then you now pull resources together, pull the people together to achieve that goal. And except you walk, you know, there is a portion that says, except to agree together, can they really work? So if, if you ask me, we have had leaders in this country, some try to move us in the direction of greatness. But some will come and decide that, no, I want to enhance my personal wealth, my personal success, then the nation may suffer. And I think that is what has brought us to where we are now. Basically, the essence of having that opportunity is to add value. 
But you see, let me refer back to the issue of the Udoji Award of mm. those days. Mm. God bless Nigeria so much through an oil boom. And you'd have expected that the development process of Nigeria should get a big chunk of that boom. Mm. But what happened? Some came together and decided that no, let's increase our allowances. Let's share this money. And that is when ostentatious leadership started. Many married more wives instead of building structures. And of course, whether you like it or not, your future comes to you. It's just like when you have a student in school and instead of studying and preparing to pass very well in your exams, you are spending the money on enjoyment. You will pay for it. Someone said you either pay now and play later or you play now and pay later. I think some of the leaders paid and some came to play. And those who, who have, you know, come into that environment to play appear to be more than those who have come to pay for what we need to secure our future. But right now we have an opportunity to readdress all these issues. And I don't believe in throwing the past away. When you have to look back and ask, where did we start going wrong? Mm. Then you put, you, you start correcting the process and you must work on the minds of the followers also, because if the followers decide not to flow with you, it won't be easy for you, and you also must give a good direction that we end the respect of the followers. All right. You know, uh, the thing is, usually when you engage some Nigerians in discussion, they tend to say, oh, it used to be good, then we have great leaders, the MQ Abiola, the Ds, the Dat, but those people are not here with us now. And so the question that begs one's eyes is that, is it... A worthless situation because we don't have those people anymore does it mean that nigeria cannot gather itself back to actually um move forward in this dispensation oh well i think it will be um uh, very backward of any nation um if that is the mentality that we are holding on to it shows like um he has rightfully said that um you know it, it would mean that we have actually are not working to a plan or a vision uh, but I was just really start by saying that, um, you know, leadership is actually deliberate action. It's not something you wake up and say, oh, today I want to go and lead. And you build leadership, you build the qualities into the people, even um, when you talk about followership. It's actually something that it's inbuilt and gradually from within the society develops, you know, it's 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 been uh, 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 what what's the word being nationalistic, or being um, driven by your society, the American values, the British values, the German values. So it comes from there. It's about a set way of life, set beliefs that the society uphold. It's not a few people that uphold those core values. It's like a gener general general uh, values in the society. And from there, you choose those that have been proven, tested, that actually, you know, they're credible people mm -hmm. and um, that they can lead others to believe. So you earn leadership. So for us in Nigeria, it then goes back to, um, if we say those leaders are no more with us, does that mean we stopped building those core values into the larger society all through their lifetime to then bring this vacuum? So where did we go wrong, like you said, a reassessment, and that's what um, a true leader does. You look at where you are, and then you start building new systems that can correct and challenge the status quo. Mm. And you're, you're already in the face of um, the heat to ensure that the, news, the, the new direction is where you're leading the people. You don't have to be dictatorial, because when you have the right thing, you believe in their judgment. You don't have to be the one in charge of all decisions because you would have made sure you put in credible people. And um, if we say we have leaders that are not leading by example, those people you mentioned, the people are thinking about the leadership um, qualities mm. in them or in their actions or in the way they were able to follow them. So what's that core thing that would make me follow you, mm. that would make me defend you? Because you have to defend your leader. You have to follow your leader. That's submitting your will to say, I would follow in the process. You may not necessarily know the outcome, 
but you believe that I sense that this is the right decision. And even if you make a mistake, it would be a lesson for all to learn and you're moving forward. But if a leader says one thing and doesn't deliver on one side, the followership would, nece would not necessarily just follow what you say. Okay. They mostly would follow what you do. Okay, let me take you up on the recent appointment. You know, while Nigerians voted for the president, the vice president, and governors at different states, now with the appointments the president has been making in recent times, um, do you think it's rallied towards the right direction? Um, I was just really stuck by um, the quality of the leadership of um, the person, uh, President Buhari. And um, like I have said, that um, leadership is direct, you know, it's an action and deliberate is the president deliberate in his actions um, is the president um, getting the communication going between the people and um, his policies I'm just asking you this so that you go with it in your mind's eye because it's not as simple as ABC to say oh he's appointed this person and that makes it holistic I believe in systems even in the in the appointment, is it following logic? Is it following a set procedure that if anything ever happened or if uh, in another four years time, we can say from A to B, when you get into office the first month, this is what you do. Then in the next month, this is the policy direction or this is how you choose. This is how you arrive at who you choose. This is how you, you know. So it's not, I, I think that what Nigerians and what we as a people need to move away from is emotional leadership, followership, society. You don't use emotions to rule the nations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a global competition, a competition for your mind. You know, it's a mind power. And it's, it would not take emotions. You can want to score the child and they play up. And then you say you won't school them and then you probably you want to take them up. But at times you need to be firm and you need to be decisive. So in this sort of um, appointments is made, we may all be thinking of the old style status quo and all of that. But as far as he knows that at the end of the day, I'm, this team I'm putting together are credible men. Because like I said, he won't make all those decisions. Mm -hmm. He cannot always make the decisions for the Ministry of Defense. He will not always make the decisions for Ministry of Finance. So he would have to nominate and choose those people that would be his core team, meaning that you know they are like him, they know his values, they know where he's going, and all of them have that set vision of what he wants to achieve that he has been able to articulate to them. And again, it needs to even go beyond opposition party lines and all of that. You need to look in the society. It might even be your worst critic. If you're, if if someone criticizes you so much, if you don't look at it from the like, I, this person just hates me. No, look at what that person is. The person can actually be on your team if you really want to succeed and be noble. So mm -hmm. for a leader to be noble is different from a leader that is there by name. When you're noble, you just want the best pack. And you pay the price of criticism, you pay the price of time, because it's only going to be a time that people will know that you're challenging the status quo, but we always like to remain in the status quo. Okay. Now to you, Gideon Logan, do you, what can you say about the relationship between leaders in Nigeria and the followers? I, I will definitely declare that there's a wide gap, you see, and that was heavily expressed during the last elections in Nigeria. You see, let's, democracy says that it is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And you see people coming out, it's okay, you go and represent us, we vote for you. The people, they play their part. But when it comes to what the people get, that is where the gap is. And if you look at the state of our infrastructures in Nigeria, and the responsiveness of the government to the yearnings of the people, definitely there is a gap and that is why and thank God is not hidden what we have been reading in the newspapers listening to on the news of billions of naira you know dollars that have been taken away from Nigeria that should be used to develop the society then you must begin to wonder that what exactly is going on and what is the role of leadership and like she said there must be set objectives. So do we now ask that what are we supposed to use the resources of this country for? 
is it for pleasure or for treasure i am here to say that if you place pleasure ahead of treasure you will lose but if you place treasure ahead of pleasure you will really have pleasure so right now this is not a time to boast you know some of them were actually boasting because there was no accountability in place that yes go to dubai the tallest hotel there is for me this and that and yet we know that there are constituency allowances that should be spent in developing the communities so go to some communities in nigeria now check the kind of water they have even within our immediate environment try to drive off this lagos about expressway and check out the kind of roads you have and people complain and complain we call it criticizing and yet some of these you are still a nigerian you've just been privileged to go in there to manage our resources and yet you quickly rush to india when you are sick and yet we have hospitals in nigeria that are not well equipped you are quick to rush down to the uk when you are you know under pressure in nigeria for holidays and you see how that system runs and that's why i am saying that leadership is a connection as a leader in my family as a father i look around to learn about great things in some other family so that i can give my family a competitive advantage i can prepare these children to go into the world and compete effectively and add value so when we just feel that and one thing is important here perhaps we need to differentiate between um, politics and democracy democracy is a system of government that captures the interests of the people all stakeholders politics perhaps the way we play it in nigeria is party focused like she rightly mentioned if appointments are to be made let me ask you should i appoint based on federal character those who will come in and loot the treasury <clears throat> or should i appoint with a little deviation from the principle of federal character and put people in place that we develop in nigeria that in two years time we have uninterrupted power supply in this country we have improved health management we have you know very we have our airlines back we begin to enjoy prosperity within the country and we begin to people start rushing to nigeria to invest in nigeria so the question now is what is the essence of the appointment there have been appointments since independence of this country you know and people are asking you know for a long time we have heard dividends of democracy dividends i think we should begin to focus on dividends of good governance because we i was actively involved in the monitoring of the last elections in nigeria and i was i was disturbed in Ikeja, where i live by the grace of god you see people you know going around blasting music and sharing indomie noodles nokia phones and i keep wondering now, now that, that what brings, has this got to do with governance that brings me to the my next question is that are nigerians helping the leaders lead well are they really helping them you know you know may god deliver us from poverty mentality you see there is a system that some leaders use they deliberately impoverish the people to manipulate them i don't need a nokia phone from any politician i don't need your gifts our concern is that develop this country let's be proud of this country let our children be proud to remain in their country so what i mean but you see that's what we if you go out there now let me give you some specific locations drive between sheraton hotels in ikeja and maryland you will meet at this minimum of about 200 young ones selling in the traffic is this the kind of economy we should have now no there are questions to ask so it's not just about rolling out okay now the next election will be in 2019 we have been promised paradise in 2020 so are we now saying in 2019 or 2018 you now begin to bring her bag of rice to tell the to share to the people no develop the environment let the environment be a wonderful catalyst for economic development we have a dependent economy you must focus on your uncle who is a senator before you eat before you dress before you send your children to school no 
Let's have an enabling environment. And that is why I subscribe to what she said. Leadership is deliberate. If you need to begin to train people to manage the country, start it. Let's start a process. We don't need those who go there and steal our resources. And yet, we are getting to know now, which is obvious. The last president of this country said there were cabals in his government. Mm. Many laughed over it. We are beginning to see the faces of some of these cabals. So why should you steal the resources of this country and spend it to sponsor terrorists, to destroy lives and properties? It's, an, it, it's not normal. So we must begin to go for accountability. So I don't want to be, I'm a Nigerian, irrespective of where I'm from. I look forward to a developed Nigeria that we will all be proud of. So if you ask me, whoever does this job, I'm not so bothered about whether he's from my hometown or not from my hometown. It's all about the fear of God. A drift away from unbridled acquisition of material things that are personal, perhaps to yourself or your family members, that you will leave behind. You know, go to great nations of the world. They have taken the pain to develop their environment so that you come into that environment, it becomes easy for you to do business and succeed. And that is what God expects from us. So let's stop all this. Uh, I, I, need, I need to probably throw a question on the table now. How much went into the last election in this country, the campaigns? I mean, it was amazing. And you now see them coming out with all the vigor and strength. But when it comes to good governance, putting the purpose of leadership into manifestation, you start having excuses. We no. are tired of that. Mm. So, and we are challenging this present government. Nigerians are there. We are resilient. We are ready. So, and we are watching and monitoring. And now we have more of a participatory democracy. So, if this government fails to deliver on the promises and to meet the expectations of the people, 2019 we call, but it's not my prayer that that happens. Mm. It's my prayer that in the next two years, we all come together to celebrate, you know, a level of greatness in this country. God has blessed us. We have okay. the resources. <clears throat> Someone said that there is no underdeveloped country. You can only have a mismanaged country. This country should not be mismanaged. We should begin to move in the right direction. And, of course, success is always waiting to announce itself okay. for those who walk towards success. Okay, let me let me take Abimbola up now. I have not been outside the country before, but Abimbola has had the privilege of living outside Nigeria. Now, you must have witnessed what electioneering period is like over there. Do politicians come out to distribute recharge card over there, or maybe it's with a beggar on the streets to win the art of electorate like we see happen in Nigeria? If that starts happening, I'm sure they will shut down that society in a developed country. But I'll just paint a picture, and because I, I always like to explain these things with reality. Um, I, I went to the UK in, in the year 2000, and, um, and I went to study. And on getting the Cigar Society, you know, I have a national insurance card, and I open an account, you know. So already I have a system in place that gives me the right to work, the right to study. Then over the years, um, due to uh, my, my, my um, family background and affiliations to the UK, I was able to then naturalize and stuff. But even before that, I was in the university 10 years after having done community work development and stuff. And um, there was a call for um, people that are from the black minority ethnic group to actually go and understudy the UK parliament, whereby you would shadow a leader in the UK Parliament and then you can start you know stand as an MP in your local area and I had the privilege of understudying the Deputy Prime Minister um, Labour Leader um, Arit Harman in the year 2010 to 11 and um, that naturally would make you be able to stand you know for elections but what I'm saying is all through those years I didn't have to know anybody I d in fact when you write application forms you don't even put your name you, only, you, you don't have to put your address, you don't have to put your... Everything is optional for you, your religion, everything. They are interested in the capacity you have and what you're bringing. And even though you know that, you know, you know what you're bringing, it is a compulsory and mandatory six months 
induction period meaning that yes you may have said this on your cv but we're still watching you for six months and then we're building your capacity to fill that position that we've asked you to come into whilst you're working we are training you we're paying you and you're paying your taxes and you're able to stand then you don't even have to have lived in any i don't have to I, you all you need to do is live in a society like move from lagos to abelkuta or tomikeja to uh, another part of the city and i've lived there for three months then you you're registered with a gp you have some form of identification mm -hmm. in that locality and you're good enough to stand to represent your society now do you, do you it's want never to... going to be are you from a tribe are you black or white you've lived paid taxes and there's a proof you're, you're legitimate you can stand as an mp you can stand as a community leader you can be anybody move out, move again in another six months and go and contribute to another community under three months you can stand an election that is how simple it is and people even ignore you when you come around and say things about politics because you know it's not a do or die affair and then when you're standing for anything a counselor mm -hmm. it's it's not a full-time job you know you do it prior pursue your work and all of that the people would volunteer to help you to carry your carry out your agenda so it goes back to what we're saying that do, are you known have you paid your dues do you have a policy direction do you understand the context of your community so you're deliberately planning you can't come and say to people um, in the uh, streets in the UK that you're coming to you can't just come and bulldoze you know down the building or even and say because government and you haven't called a community meeting you know repeatedly with a quorum of a number of set people that have to have attended that meeting and signed you know the community have to have signed and agreed if there if, if you haven't done that and there's a, a, a grid lock on that. You go to the courts and then that is only when the government can then, you know, um, exert its power over the people. Mm. So there is no way as an ordinary citizen, you know, in such a society that you're not going to follow the leadership or be accountable because it's a partnership. It's, 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 it's because I know you in our political <laughs> atmosphere here. Some councillors or some MPs come back from the UK in nights before and contest elections, you know, and they're able to win because of their godfathers. That would never, ever happen. And even we're following the US campaigns or build up to the campaigns, you know, of the uh, business mogul Donald Trump mm -hmm. and all of that. You know, he's still having to work hard despite the fact that, you know, he's, he's, he's employed, he, he, he's a strong employ, employer of labor. Uh, you know, is into the real estate business, but he's not taking it for granted to say because I'm Donald Trump, you know, vote mm -hmm. for me. He's still having to go campaign and meet the people, and they're throwing the questions in his face. Okay. So it's going to be aspirational. I always say to uh, even as an individual, your personal life, because if you don't start with yourself, you can't go out there and then be what you're not. You know, if your home is not clean, if your home is not well, mm -hmm. you can't go outside and prove that you can do it. At some point, the cracks will show. So it starts with the individual. All right. Now, and over over there, do you get to um, buy customized wares, or everybody buy the same clue because you're commissioning a fifty-kilometer road? Has no, it ever happened? No, it, it's so it's so ironic um, that I tell you that um, maintenance of the roads and all of this it's it's for them about the um, the contribution to the economy. It's almost unbelievable that even the air you breathe, if they could charge you for it, they will. And in a good space, I'm not one of those that will be against paying taxes because I know my taxes work. But what I'm trying to say is that if there are, you know, if you live in, a, in an area and by morning when you're driving past, there is a portal there. And um, the number of people that would you know the bomb or whatever stop just because they have to maneuver the government is calculating what that is doing because they will translate it to it's a peak period you know time that the people take that road so they may be late for one minute or two our bus services may be late for one minute or two then 
we're beginning to lose value and face when we say we would use this money to do so they are calculating so don't be surprised that if you take that road the very night of the morning that you notice the pothole it's gone and you don't have to commission you don't the have to the commission portal. you don't have to and then it's not because you've called the cancer to say oh there's pot holes or individuals pouring all kinds of other um affiliated materials that would even damage the the the, the, the oh is because the government realizes the productivity level is beginning to be affected when you let these things go the way it is okay. and at times they pull down you've heard about them recalling you know goods in stores mm. shutting down empires you know breaking down buildings because they found probably from the foundation 10 years down the line they have found that some elements in the house is no longer conducive for the functioning of humanity. So for them to rather leave it out, the, the building is a, a one billion watts of building. You know, they're thinking in terms of the pressure on the NHS, on the people's lives that would then be on benefits that they will be paying for, that will not be able to work. Jeez. So it's a proactive thinking, mm. and if you're in that kind of a society, you would only but want to be a part of it because it's alive and it's brilliant, and you just want to be a part of it. All right, now, Judy Logan, you know the law quite well. You know, I want to clarify that: do governors do us a favor? Do, do they do Nigerians a favor by building hospitals, by ensuring mm. that the school structures are in the right position because a whole lot of time Nigerians will say that they um, try to argue amongst themselves that is this governor is good he gave us hospital he gave us this he gave us that and as another one arguing I say what has he done and so the question is is uh, the leaders really doing us a favor by doing their jobs in the Nigerian context perhaps for the people or for some of them the man is doing a favor but no leadership is a duty you just listen to her and of course the experience I had in the US really made me to make up my mind that we must passionately continue to demand for governor's accountability in Nigeria. And I want to throw this question also. If you look at what we call social investment is a corporate social responsibility in public relations, which makes some organizations to come and ask, okay, we tar a road in Victoria Island. That doesn't happen abroad. You don't need as a private body to build an hospital for a community in the UK. It is because of the failure of governance that you now look up to uh, corporate organizations to come and repaint a primary school. You see, I go around in this issue of governance. There are some communities around there. You get there, you see some primary schools, and you wonder who sits under those rugged roofs and to learn what. So, but if we celebrate them, they take it for granted that they are doing us a favor. And that is what we are saying. You are there to serve and not to be served. I ask myself a question. Can I, as a governor of a state in Nigeria, fly to the UK and I'm getting to the airport, I tell them, go and bring Sirene, bring uh, five jeeps with Sirene to take me to my hotel. It doesn't happen there. We meet them. They behave well. But within our society, and it has to do with values, the things we value. I think we over-celebrate what should not be celebrated in Nigeria. All the cheap tensy titles, you see there is a man oppressing you, and yet you are still celebrating him. So he takes you on a ride. Here, yeah. you know, this Lagos about Expressway, there was a time we had to go on TV, newspaper, begging, begging before they fix it. It shouldn't be so. You must pay attention to what we call man are. Let me tell you an experience I had some years back. I left Lagos and I was going to Ifaki in Ekiti. We, I left with some of my colleagues at um, Tinubu. When I got to Ekiti, and you can imagine the number of hours, I phoned the man we were together in Lagos and they have like, hey, how are you? He said he was yet to get home within Lagos. And that is why you see the stress level of the people. We talk of high blood pressure. You see, the focus of governance should be on the people. Just this week, 
A container trailer fell off the bridge at Oluyelegba, killing human beings. And yet there are laws preventing them from operating during the day. So who ensures that these laws are implemented? There are issues. And by the time, you know, she made a very valid point. If you do a random sampling of some of our leaders and even ask them some simple questions about the essence of being in office, they will not be able to answer your questions. And we are saying that it is all about the human beings. The human beings. So if what you are doing will jeopardize the interest of the people, drop it. Who cares if you have 160 houses on the street and yet the money you have used to build those houses is what should have gone in developing the education sector. And we don't know there's a challenge in this country now. I go out and I see a teeming population of young ones who don't have jobs. And they are active. <laughs> you expect that someday they will begin to express. We call it emotional ventilation in HR. I witnessed something. I will refer back to that uh, Sheraton and Maryland axis. There was a day they uh, kicked against indiscipline. They came. What I saw that they frightened me. Those young boys and who who sell on the road. They started bringing out clubs from the flowers along the road, ready to fight the kick against indiscipline. And we gave a caution about There is a time you may not be able to control this level of, uh, of um, unemployment that we are trying to create, you see. And somebody should pay attention. You should be able to bring your data together and tell yourself in 20 years time, where are we in Nigeria? What are the facilities we need to support our growth then? And all these things, we, this is, these are the things we call development. You see, you go to the, let me, let me go to the aviation sector. You travel out of Nigeria. You don't have so much to do with physical contact. No. But you get to an airport here. You even enter the toilet. There are men there holding toilet rolls. Asking you if you want you know, we are too physical, and yet there are billions of naira allocated to that uh, that ministry. We have heard of buying two armored vehicles for 255 million naira in this country. Now, and what is our population? And someone said, even if you choose to give each Nigerian one million naira, what's the population of Nigeria? See, so have money left, so we must migrate away from this abroad. You can hardly oppress anybody. Things work. You fit in. And you behave. If you misbehave, you know, I, I was responding to this issue of uh, anti-corruption recently. And people are saying uh, there should be special courts. And I asked a question. A former governor in this country, who the short arm of the law in court, could not pin down, who was jailed in the UK. And I monitored the declaration of the judge. You know, because some people came out to defend that, like you just asked now, uh, he built an Olympic sized stadium, this one. And the judge said it wasn't uh, the business of the judge to assess his performance in office, but to jail him for specific crime. That is what we are saying. But in a society where it is difficult to adjudicate justice, development will be a difficult task. But I, I, have, I have a great hope that what I'm beginning to see now. Uh, there is hope for Nigeria. Now, I want to take you up on role switching. Um, before the elections come up, we see that leaders uh, are the messes of the people. You see them going house by house, paying visage, we want you to do this, we have this for you. And the next minute they win elections, the people are the ones begging. Now, the question is, as a legal practitioner, what are the ways we Nigerians could use to call their leaders to order? Or is it a clearly lost situation for them once they vote them into power? You know, by virtue of the constitution and everything, the moment they go in there, you have to wait. It's either they are impeached or sent back from the house, or you wait till another election, another four years. And that's what we are saying. The accountability process is not strengthened in Nigeria. Paraventure, I'm not EFCC. So even if I know that someone is corrupt and I have proofs, I can only write a petition to EFCC. But you are not the prosecutor. 
you are not the judge. And so, and the judge, may the matter may be on for years, which is what we have seen in Nigeria. Uh, there was a recent land fraud we uncovered in this Lagos. And I will tell you that because of the big names involved, uh, there were reluctant responses from the relevant stakeholders that should, that should handle the matter. And that is society we have found ourselves. But in developed countries, no matter how big your name is, if you have contravened the law, you have to pay for it. So here, it is said that no one is above the law. But what is in practice does not correlate with that expression. And until we begin, until you know that, and I think that is beginning to happen, that even when you have money to manipulate, it will fail you. All right? They pin you down and make sure that you pay for what you have done. And in industrial psychology, that is what we call reinforcement theory. If you are punished for an offense, you can be prevented from committing that offense. But if you are not punished, you are being encouraged to go into greater offenses. Right. And we must begin, you know, uh, I want to encourage the president. He's been in Nigeria. He knows the society. And he knows that Nigeria deserves a level of development. The man should allow justice. Whoever comes into collision with the law should pay for it. Don't cover anybody, whether on partisan basis or tribal basis or religious basis. And that is when we can begin to cleanse our environment. Because I, there is a caution here. Some of these uh, guys, they have so much money that they can spring up troubles. But I think right now, some of them are beginning to be sober. But if the government allows the effort to become lukewarm, they will mobilize again and begin to distract the government. But now, I hope for the best. Abimbola, do you think Nigerians have the wherewithal to question um, those that represent them? Yeah, I, I was just going to um, say, can I contribute to that um, aspect? You see, um, it's called citizens' engagement. And in a democracy, it's one of the very core values of democracy because like you actually defined democracy earlier that it's about the people and then it's a social contract you're actually signing a contract when they give you their mandate that you should um, go and um, um, represent them and you're in government and all of that government of today would need to understand that we're in a democracy and they cannot keep mixing and um, you know like a potpourri of all that sort of harassment, all that sort of uh, lack of following of um, citizens' engagement to do things. Because let me tell you, the human capital of this nation is its greatest asset. If you keep thinking it's the oil, well, we're beginning to see that some people may choose to say they're not buying your oil anymore. And there hasn't been a formula of drinking oil. So you're definitely going to rely on human beings. We've seen the failure of even the ability to raise funds by some states and they're owing their people. So you're going to come back to IGR, internally generated revenue, and that is by way of taxes. But if you don't make it a conducive business environment, how can your people, how can your people contribute to the national development? And it is going to be the creativity and the innovations of the people that would generate ideas of jobs um, I was listening earlier, two young people founded Google. Google. And then we all know of the story of Facebook. They were students. And if you look at today's world, they are employers of labor. That is how you pay your taxes. That is what brings about the, uh, the, the innovation. It is not going to be by any other methodology that we're using now. So the government needs to start, stop, um, start thinking of the people as their first and foremost stakeholder. Um, and not be irritated by people because once they're in office they forget their campaigns they forget those sweats the collapsing of the stage when they're campaigning you know how they will go to Yashakira and all of that and take local pictures and all the paparazzi they forget quickly but even in the policies they are making for it to be sustainable for it to be owned and for it to be true to your society it has to come from the people it has to be back to the people and then you're just there to bring a conducive environment. World Bank will go. World Bank will change its agenda for Africa. At you know, they can blink tomorrow and change it. 
so would always be developed towards. But like the Asian tigers, when we look at our local development or strength and work from that um, perimeter, would we be building a society? So for me, the leaders we have in place today, how are they thinking? Now, are the people positioning themselves well to be respected by the leaders? The, let me tell you, I, I give kudos to the Nigerian people. I, I, I respect them a lot. And um, when you talk about the dignity in labor, they, they are so dynamic in what they do that if I were any leader, I would feel that I've won the battle halfway because you already have people that require little or nothing from you except for in, uh, an enabling uh, environment. He talked about the, the youth and the people selling orcas in, in, in traffic. They are creative. I can't carry mirrors which has weight and be selling in the, in the traffic. That means someone is saying, I don't want to be an arm robber. I want to be out there doing something. I buy things off those people, not because I need it, but just because I want to believe that I'm contributing my little quota to ensuring that one day it's not the one that will break the mirror of my cars and steal my handbag one day. If he wants to sell some, I do not even argue on the price with them because I feel I can't do this. So you already have industrious people. Those are the people um, that would build the society. So when we put the people down and say, oh, they are not uh, participatory, you can only but try. You can only but want to. For example, I run a platform called the Tax Justice Platform, and we've just concluded research on the tax environment. It's shameful, the discovery. You know, it's through harassment that people come and collect um, taxes from you. They come today and expect you to pay to, uh, tomorrow morning. A, a, a trader, a woman, for example, is more vulnerable in any um, business environment. Mm. Let me give you a scenario. I'm building this. Um, beautiful modern market, a model market. Before you were b going to build the market, I was just selling in a small store that I was paying some money that I could afford. But you say the uplift of the market is important, which is true. But it's now a modern market that it's, the price is about 600000 compared to maybe 50000 So that woman that was selling safely in a kiosk in that market that had a child at the back side of the room of the uh, of the market selling now that you've built this modern market for you know elites without factoring in safety of oh how is it going to be that this population will be out now without a shop you then build those markets and then those people end up selling on the road you call them illegal roadside sellers that's not the only risk you know the risk is that that child is now out on the streets and anything can happen to that child. Now that's not the second thing, you know. When the taxpayers come and collect levies, you pay taxpayers for your lodger. You pay this and you pay that. I get frustrated and say, you know, is it even worth it? Likelihood is that I would become poor again. Likelihood is that I've collected microfinance that I can't repay. Then you come and take my wares, which are perishable. I'm selling fresh fish. It can't last three days from where you've put it. Asking me to come and use 100,000 to collect my wares back. Are you seeing the chain, the, the vicious cycle of poverty? Rather than being antagonistic of... Be, the, it's almost like um, the government feel irritated that you're attempting to try. By the time the government sits down to say, I don't want this person to be a burden on me, you would almost sit beside the woman and say, what do you need to be able to be making that your 10,000 naira a day or your 1,000 naira a day. That is a responsive government. So for me, it's a shame if the larger society are poor and you think being rich is by modern buildings, expensive houses that your people cannot live in is the worst poverty of our modern time. And the government needs to look into that. You know, I keep saying to people, I live daily. I don't plan for tomorrow, uh, 1,000 years time and all of that because it's a burden. Let me live today well. Let me know I have a good day. And I'm sure that is the minimum the Nigerians are asking of their government. All right. Thank you very much, Abdin Bola. We want to take a quick break on the program and we'll be back with more as we discuss the lead and to follow affecting Rose. Stay tuned. Some pundits believe that as long as the political system is driven by selected few, corruption may be difficult to fight. You should be careful about what you say. 
I am not the only politician. Even if I wrong, if I wrong anyone, it is time to forgive me. Please for Arena every Sunday at 9 15 pm. And a repeat broadcast every Tuesday at 1 30 pm.